Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Tisha. Today we are gonna do a quick little get ready with me while I answer some of the questions that you guys had sent me. I'm so sorry this video is a lot later than I planned, but when I got sick, there was like another additional week and a half of sniffles, and I love you guys, I know you guys love me, but I would not put anything anyone through that. So I tried to do this video um, where I sat down and started answering some of these questions. Um, I even pulled some of the products from some of the things that you guys had asked, but um, I was so sniffly. I was like, that's not good. So we just scrapped that and I waited. Um, I also got a new iPad eyeshadow palette to try. Look how marked up, I already got it. This is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2. It's the rose toned palette. I don't have the first one, but I allowed myself to get one palette during the Sephora sale and this was it. Really pricey, but really pretty. Um, there's some cream shades. So again, if this doesn't work out for me, you're not gonna see this video because of course I'm not gonna post a video of fails because I am really not claiming to do makeup well. You guys compliment me so much and you guys are so sweet to me in the comments, but um, this is just like everyday makeup. So nothing like, I'm not like calling it like a tutorial. I'll just share like things I do with you guys and answer your questions as we go. So let's jump in. Um, I always start with this Merit, I think it's called the Minimalist. I think that's what this is called. This is my under eye concealer. This is a very creamy product, but I just use the tiniest amount because I have the dark colors under my eye and I kind of let it sit. So I just give myself a couple of dots and then we will buff that out. I will be looking down into a mirror over here because I don't want to do my makeup into my phone. But um, that is the concealer. I only use this under my eyes, so I don't use it all over my face. It's got a very creamy consistency. I love this product though. I do highly recommend it. It's just that as an all over concealer to cover the chin situation, it's very, very emollient and like moves around and kind of almost like emphasizes what's going on in my chin. So I use two concealers. I know that's kind of like high maintenance, isn't it? But these really just work for me. And so since I'm using such a little amount of product, this will last me forever, which I love. And then this is the concealer that I was using before. I was actually gifted this from Merit, um, but I really, really enjoy it. This and the lip oil are my absolute favorite products. I use them all the time. Um, so this I just kind of let sit for a second um, just to kind of get a little bit tackier so I can work with it. But this is the concealer I use on my chin. And I actually do use a different brush for each. So um, I, it doesn't really matter because I've never actually had anything happen with my skin. But I just feel like under my eyes is a different reason I conceal. And then my chin is because of all that I have going on. So I just put a little over all of that. So let's start with the first question so I can, I'm chatty as you guys know, but, and I look crazy right now, I know, but uh, I fear like this will keep me on track and not just talk about whatever. So JG asked, wondered why you moved from Chicago to Kentucky so far away from family and friends. So actually we decided, we started thinking about moving in 2018. Um, it was, long story short, a career opportunity for Aaron. Um, I worked for Head Start, so I know there was Head Starts everywhere. Um, but the part that I wanted to talk about more was talking about moving away from family and friends because that was really hard for me. Um, I'm very, very close with my sister. I'm very, very close with my aunt. Um, but you know, I guess I moved for love <laughs> for lack of a better way to explain it. I knew I, well, I hadn't traveled much before, but when I was in high school, I always thought I would be someone that moved around um, or tried to live in different places from my small town that I grew up in. But I graduated in 2001. So summer of 2001, um, if you are, were growing up or older at that time, you, you kind of knew what happened in September. And um, again, it kind of stopped me from doing what I thought I would do, you know, in my 20s before I became a mom and all the things. So I had a plan to do that just in general. I was going to... Um, uh, try to go to college in New York actually um, and you know I was poor so I had to wait to save some money but um, you know in 2018 Aaron and I had lost a really good friend to a really sad tragic um, you know I don't want to talk I don't want to share details but like uh, untimely you know he was 35 we were 35 and um, you know it was just one of those things where um, it was instant and you know, whatever. So point of that is we just kind of started, um, 
talking again in terms of like helping each other out. Like I, I babysit his dog sometimes and he helped me put some things together. And it was just one of those like, oh, are we dating things? Because we were just such good friends, which I really, I mean, of course, you know, relationships are, everyone's is different, but that was like our story. You know, we were just such good friends and we had been good friends for so long. We started talking about like, if things didn't happen like this in our 20s or if things didn't happen like that, you know, um, when I had my son in 2010, I was actually on another plan with a friend from college. We were just graduating. We were going to go to Texas to teach English and pay off our student loans. And, um, and then I found out I was pregnant with Aiden, which was the best thing that ever happened to me, but started my, my, you know, my next decade of life living in that same town. So basically my mom was the same way as me. Like we were just not scared of being on our own. Um, she always kind of dreamed of moving to Vegas was her place. So when we were little, I heard about that a lot. And um, I guess that's basically it. I just always had this plan to move and be somewhere else and try something new. It was never scary to me, but leaving my sister was very hard. And then um, you know, we sold our homes. So Aaron and I both owned a house. Like I have to trust the process, you guys, because I know I'm gonna look crazy for most of this little chit chat, but, um, so we sold our homes and then we were kind of homeless and we had this plan to move, but my mom found out she was sick. So, um, that was really hard because then I felt like I had made the wrong decision. So I came back and forth as much as I possibly could. I mean, it's an eight hour drive from, my like driveway to to my hometown so it, it wasn't like a I could do it every other day but I did it as often as I could that summer that we moved here we were both like trying to you know secure our jobs and find a home and you know timing was hard and timing was something that I, I was very guilt ridden over for a long time because um I felt like I should have done more different but you know, my mom just kept telling me to go do it because she always wanted to do it and never did. She always stayed. And uh, so, you know, she did support it, but it was still just a really hard time. I'm putting some banana powder under my eyes. It does just kind of lock that concealer in place and brighten the area a little bit. But like I said, this is definitely not like what you should do with your makeup. I'm just doing what I do every day. Um, so, that's why we moved. We moved for a job opportunity for Aaron. I'd always wanted the opportunity to live somewhere else. Um, I had no place in mind at this point. I wanted it to be somewhere that I felt comfortable raising Aiden because at the time he would have been, when we moved, nine, almost nine. It was like he was going from eight to nine. And um, yeah, it was just, I guess it was time, but I had no plan. Like, we were like, well, if we sell our house, we'll move. And if, and if, and if, but then things, life, you know, happens. And um, it's been really great. I haven't gone home as much as I promised my family I would because of everything that happened from 2020 on. Um, but uh, I'm going to go with eye pencil. I'm sure that this part's going to be weird because I have to like pay attention or else I give myself what I call statement brows. But basically, I just use this e.l.f., um, instant brow lift. It's a very just natural product for me. I've never been very good at like pomades or anything like that, but I just start because I have what I call grandpa brows where they're sparse, but they the hairs are long and curly. So I just have to tame them basically and then kind of fill in the holes. So I start at the bottom and I just kind of make my bottom brow and tame all those hairs in. And then I kind of just, um, with very natural strokes, kind of fill in the rest of that space. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much why we moved. It's been very hard um, because, you know, I was very involved in my niece and nephew's life up until we moved. And, um, you know, there were things that were out of our control, but then there's just things like, if you have a three day weekend, do you wanna spend two of those three days in a car just to go home and see family? When I moved here, I thought for sure I would do that more. But, uh, you know, and, and Aiden has been a trooper. I want to just kind of quickly touch on him. He's very much like his mother. So he was very, you know, accepting, willing. To, and, and it didn't, I was mostly worried about him because he was very close with one of my nieces. Like, they were born within a few months of each other. So they've kind of been like twins. Me and my sister are like, ex are interchangeably given each other the kid because it's very easy since they were born. So 
Um, you know, I knew that was really going to be hard on him. So I did everything I could to make it easier. When we first got here, we did a lot of exploring. Um, and, uh, you know, just trying to make it exciting. He's made some friends here, but he's one of those people that makes one friend um, at a time. And I like that too. I had one good friend in grade school, one best friend in high school, one best friend and as an adult, um, very friendly, but just, you know, one friend's all we need. So he's got that friend. He still misses family and, you know, technology is great, but it's not the same. So like for the summers, even though it's hard on me, I don't tell him this. I let him go stay with family. So, um, and then I take the spoolie after I've kind of put my brows down where I want them. And I just make sure that that product is dispersed. Let me know down below what you guys do for brows because I've never felt like I do them well. Um, but I just, this is to tame them. So I don't have like crazy hairs poking up and looking all nuts. But other than that, I don't know what I'm doing. Plus I can't find a good brow person here. My best friend is my, was my hair person. So again, not going home a lot. My hair is longer than it's ever been. It looks crazy. Um, I color it myself and it's just kind of crazy. Like those are the things when you move, um, like finding a new hair person, finding a new, it's it, like I've, I've done it twice now. Plus there was like the pandemic, which was hard, but, um, and then they just up and leave and I'm just like, Oh, I, just, I hate change. So anyways, this is like my favorite brow product ever. I use this in conjunction with a gel. This just kind of seals the deal. Um, cause I touch my face a lot, so I don't want to grow my brows off. So after I kind of place them where I want them, I just use a gel to kind of um, hold that. And that is the, that is it. So that is basically what I do for my base. And I will share with you the powder that I use. Um, again, this is a mess, but, um, after I kind of finish, so I, I don't think I talked about, cause I was chatting about that first question. I use this L'Oreal infallible powder. This is basically my foundation and I just love it. And I use it on a brush. Um, it does come with a sponge and I, have used the beauty blender too, but a brush is just super effective. And again, I just make sure that there's no harsh lines between covering up that chin stuff and then under my eyes. And so under my eyes, I'll use like a little bit of a brightening powder. And then I just leave these brushes out because again, I'm messy. So again, like after I do my brows, if I do anything that like they look wonky, I just take the powder and just go around them, making sure that like and it's hard to do on my phone, in my mirrors easier. But just making sure that I don't have any like crazy lines going anywhere. But this is an amazing, amazing product. Okay, so then we'll use this bronzer. And I just, again, I use a lot of Ulta Drugstore. This is my absolute favorite bronzer. It's the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder. I've had it for my life. Look at the size of this thing. And it just broke it, like the top came off. But this thing I've had forever, but it's just like the perfect natural bronzy color for me. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And again, I just kind of do right around my face, just framing it a little bit. Um, and that's, you know, all I do with brown bronzer. I don't contour. I don't do any of that stuff. So let's go to the next question. But basically, we just moved here for a job opportunity for Aaron. It has been really hard to leave friends and family. Um, I am hoping now that, you know, things are getting back to normal, I can make a better effort to go home. No one's really come to visit me, which is another whole video, but um, I just, I don't have a family that travels. They've always lived within a mile of each other. Um, I remember when I was little, my mom would never take me an hour away to the good malls. We always had to deal with like whatever our small, tiny mall had. And, um, you know, it was, we, like my generation, my, um, Aunt's daughter moved to Milwaukee on her 18th birthday, I think. And then she lives in California now. All of her children have lived in California at some point. Some live back in Illinois now. But um, I guess me, I'm next. I've gone the farthest in Kentucky. My brother and sister still live in um, our hometown, I don't want to say. But, you know, it's we're, we're kind of changing things up for like our kids so they can feel because it's kind of a little bit of like, well, you come to us because we didn't leave type of thing, which is fine. But again, they just, if they go on um, vacations, they get on a plane and go somewhere cool. They're not coming to Kentucky. So um, I do understand, but like, again, it would be nice if they could come down and see where we live and all that stuff. So um, yeah, there's that. But anyways, next question, Elizabeth, Elizabeth X 
love the name, very clever, asked some really great questions. She said, how do I use my Bath & Body Works products? So as you guys know, I do a project, use it up. Um, let me see here. Grab a blush brush. I mix two blushes. So I have, I love these two. These are Essence. Again, these are like a dollar something, but um, I'm a clown with blush and I, I just love it. So I mix the two colors together. I don't think that's necessary. But anyway, so I do love to try new products from Bath & Body Works. That's kind of why I started this channel. I wanted to have a reason to chat about them. I didn't have anyone in my personal life that wanted to hear about Bath & Body Works, which is fine. Um, again, they've all benefited from my love of these products. So when I get, like I've used something or I just get in that declutter mode, they're all in. But other than that, they don't want to go with me all the time. I don't want to go to, like my sister and I used to do candle day. But she would be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I picked up four candles. And I'm like, hold my candles because I'm going to go ahead and max this out. And if we go to another store, I'm probably going to get another maxed out amount. Um, I've never tried to do more than 18 at candle day, but I'm just saying four candles. It was just so cute. I remember she'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe I bought four candles at one time. Cute. So, um, yeah, you know, not anyone in my life loves Bath & Body Works like me, which is fine. But, um, I, that's why I started this channel. I, I just wanted to talk about the stuff I loved. Like I just love candles. I love the body care. I love the layering. I love makeup, but I don't really talk about makeup because again, look at how I'm doing my makeup. It's just, it, it get at the end it always works out, but all the way through it, I'm like, I still don't know if you guys are going to see this, but anyways, um, just know that I never said this was like a how to do it. I'm just kind of sharing with you how I do mine. Um, and that there's always ways to fix anything that you put down that you're like, mm -mm, that didn't work at all. Um, because I've learned through error, but, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I do a project use it up. That's how I use up a lot of my Bath and Body Works products. Um, I will definitely set aside, um, intentional products to use. And then I also love trying new things. So there's that part of it. So it's kind of this constant back and forth and learning a balance of you can't have all the things, but if you use products up, you can have more of the things kind of a deal. Um, what's my candle routine? So in the morning, I always have a, a kitchen candle. Um, I get up at 430 and we leave the house at about seven. So that candle sometimes can look a little wonky because I just burn it to burn it. Like it's usually an invigorating candle or something that wakes me up or perks me up or makes me happy. Um, but that is pretty much all I'll do in the morning. Sometimes when I don't want to burn a candle, I will just turn on my wax melts. But again, it kind of takes a couple hours to get those going and I don't leave them on when I'm not home. So I have both options in my kitchen as well as in my living room. But for the mornings, except for on the weekends, that's pretty much all I would do. Now... When I get home in the afternoon around four, um, I usually will decide, am I going to be reviewing a candle or am I going to, um, I'm going to put some of this lip oil on. This is amazing, by the way, from Bath and Body Works. I picked it up at the mini sale. So if I'm not reviewing candle, I'll come up with some kind of blend, something that I want to just try to see if it works. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, and then on the weekends, I do kind of dedicate like, candles I'm going to burn. So I have like a couple crates that sit on one of these entertainment centers in my living room and they're my candles I rotate. So, um, I'm pretty mindful of what I mix together. I will always burn one to two in the big space, which would be my living room, dining room, kitchen that are all connected. And then if I'm going to be spending a lot of time in here, I may put a candle in here or in my bedroom area, I'll put one in there. Um, or if it's just a candle that I think needs a smaller space. I'll put it in there. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, that's kind of my routine. It's how I probably get through a lot of candles. You guys will comment and say, oh, you really get through a lot of candles. I do, but I'm just, I love candles. So I love blending them, trying new ones, getting through candles is also kind of a goal for me because I have a big collection. So I feel like I got to be moving them out as I'm moving them in type of thing. So that's kind of how I burn candles. I do usually stick to a three hour window. Um, so like on Saturday mornings, I'll start candles around nine and then right around lunch, I'll put those out. I'm still doing my cleaning and stuff like grocery getting and meal prepping. So I'm constantly changing the smell of my home. Cause again, when we meal prep, we're cooking like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and eggs and bait, you know, things that have a really heavy scent. So usually at that time I'm doing laundry, I'm opening windows. Um, 
I'm not really, that's not like my testing reviewing candle time. So I'll kind of cleanse that air space or be mindful of it anyway. And I'm also mindful of a candle that can overpower some of that stuff. So I like to share that with you guys too, because that's kind of everyday life. Um, so then around one or two, I'll burn whatever I want. You know, I'll just burn like some evening candles, but I just, I love that. That may seem extra to some of you. Some of you just like, just, girl, just light a candle and leave it alone. I like to do this. This is what I do. So, you know, the boys have their video games and, you know, Aaron has the dog and Aiden has neighborhood friends. I'm just like coming up with video ideas, doing something with YouTube because I love it. It's fun. And then just like circulating this collection, you know, type of thing. So that's my routine. Once I start a candle, do I try to finish it or switch between scents? I do both. I really do. Um, sometimes I will put a candle out that I think I will just burn once or try to blend it and see what happens or I'm reviewing it. So I'm going to burn at least halfway through. I usually have an intention with what I'm going to do with a candle, but every candle is different. Some candles blow me away. So then I want to keep going and keep going through that candle. Um, and then some I'm just like, Ooh, I like this, but I don't need another one. So I'm going to save it. Um, but most of my candles here are all candles that haven't been burned. There's a couple up in this area that have been a little bit. And then under my entertainment center, I have crates with candles that have been burned. That's kind of how I keep them separate. And then just another one that says, how do I decide which scents to light? I kind of touched on that. If I'm going to review a candle that goes on my um, office over here, and then I just am mindful of when I do it how often so that I can get that video up in a relatively quick manner. Um, candles I just want to burn for my own enjoyment. I do both. I burn all the way through. Um, but again, each candle, Tiffany Vanessa said something really profound to me. She says, there are people that burn candles and there are candle burners. And I just, I feel like to study and to understand candles, like I actually really pay attention to each brand and um, what they can handle. I don't want to intentionally ruin my own candles. Um, sometimes I do the most and I still feel like the candle can perform a certain way. But um, yeah, I just, I kind of decide that based on what I want to do for the week with videos or what I'm doing for the day. If I'm doing nothing for the day, I'll burn my favorite candles. Like I actually pick designated days just to burn a candle I've already talked about or no one cares about because I've always loved to burn candles. I've been buying them very heavily since 2016, 17, 2016, I wasn't buying them for a collection. 2017, that really kind of picked up. And I wish I could have shared with you guys what I used to have in my collection. I think about it sometimes. It's so sad. I'm like, oh man, I used to have that candle. I'll see it on Macari pop up for like $60. And I'm like, I had that candle and I bought it like two for third, no, two for 20 plus you 10 off 30. So you get like three candles, you know, like eight, nine bucks. A can it was crazy all the time, you know? And then I remember being at certain candle days where people are like eight fifty, I won't pay it. So anyways, yeah, that's that. Um, body care. Do I choose a scent per day or switch it up throughout? Um, I actually do spray some multiple things throughout the day. I always have something project use it up in my purse or in my car at my office. So that just gets sprayed on. I, I rarely, whatever scent I start the day with, um, is usually what's posted in my videos. I usually post it, but, um, once I don't smell that anymore, I don't have any problems putting something else on, but every once in a while when I use it with, in conjunction with perfume, I have to kind of be mindful of that because perfumes last a little bit longer than the body care. But typically, um, I'm usually trying something new that I'm loving or trying something in my project, use it up. Um, and then everything else is just staring back at me from the little cart. Thank you for all those questions. I really appreciated that. Okay, so Alma asked for me to share my lipstick collection. So I'm just going to share with you my absolute favorites. I have a little bucket here. Um, they're all like the same color and anything else I have is like up here on a shelf and it's not, um, it's nothing different. So this first one I'm going to share with you is Urban Decay Bun Bun. This is just like a really pretty nude color. Again, they, it is still smells good. If your lipstick start to smell like Play-Doh, they can be bad. I've had that one for quite a while. Um, but another brand I really love is Huda Beauty. And these are the power mats. This is in Joyride. You guys ask me a lot. It's on my lips. It's usually one or two or three of these. So this is that color. It almost looks exactly like the other one, right? These are just my favorite colors. I don't really branch out. This is another one from Urban Decay. It's called 66 and it's a comfort matte. So it's a little creamier, not like it doesn't dry on my lips, but there's that color. And 
Again, I like to check. I go through my collection quite often just to see what they smell like and I will get rid of lipsticks that smell weird. This is from ColourPop. They actually have some really great lip products too. This is the Luxe Blur Lip in Gen X. But when I got this, I broke it, like on, I think on camera. And um, it automatically had a different smell, but it's very comfortable on the lips. And I'll share a couple of these colors with you. I'll have to just wipe them off. But isn't that a really pretty pink? I normally just stick with nude colors. Let me just share like one of these with you compared so you can see how pink it is. But um, these are my tones of lipstick. But yeah, so like it's like a nude deeper or like a light pretty pink. But I have a couple more I want to share with you. Um, and again, it's all the same type of lip products. That's why I didn't want to go through my entire collection with you guys. But um, here we go. So this is a newer one too. This is kind of like one of my lighter colors. This is um, by Makeup by Mario and it's in the shade Aaron. These are the Ultra Suede Lipsticks. These are a little pricey but really pretty. And again, there's that, like, it's not, I just stick to this little color wheel here. There's no, I have some reds, but I just never feel very confident in them. This is my absolute favorite lipstick. It's almost gone. This is in payday. Look how much is left. It's like, you can see it's really used. And this is typically the one I'm wearing when you guys are like, Ooh, what's your lip color? It's so pretty. So like I said, those are like my absolute favorites. Um, is there anything else? Oh, these used to be my favorites. I wanted to share them. And I remember the day I stopped wearing this lip color. This is from Too Faced. I think these are pretty. This is my absolute favorite. This is in Sunday Fun Day. I've actually repurchased this. This smells amazing. And again, I kind of have it a million times. It looks very orange there, but it's not. One day I went to, um, the store and someone asked me what I was wearing. And it was this lipstick. And it's in Sex on the Peach. And I was like, I'll never wear this lipstick again. Because I was like, it's Too Faced. She goes, oh, I love Too Faced. What color? And I was like, Sex on the Peach? And I just never wanted to say that out loud again. So I was like, I will never wear it again. But it's very pretty. Like I said, that's it. The, it's a little bit of pink, a little bit of mauve, lots and lots of nude colors. But um, those are my favorite brands too. Like Huda, Urban Decay, and um, used to be Too Faced. But... They really got too creative with their names. So let me just wipe that off so I don't get all over my face or, you know, anything. But yeah, thank you for asking that question. I love sharing my collection with you guys, but that's pretty much it. A lot more, you know, some drugstore, some lip glosses, but a lot of colors just like that. Okay. Susan Carr asked me to list out all of my scents, give numbers, and randomly pick. I took this one idea and made my single cruise video. So I wanted to make sure to give her a shout out in this video. Thank you, Susan. That was a really fun idea. And it's going very interestingly. I'm uh, interesting. It's going very interesting. That's not very good talking. It's going interesting. And I can't wait to share that with you guys. But I thought about doing it with some other parts of my collection, maybe in a future project, use it up because it's really fun. Because again, I would have never put these candles together on my own if the random generator didn't put them together for me. So, okay. So thank you again. And I'll link that video above if you haven't seen it. We're going to dip into the eyeshadow palette. So I'm going to start with that cream shade and we'll just keep going with these questions. So Anna Dovey, you guys, she has a channel and it's super cute. Go check her out. I'll try to remember to link it down below. Um, but she's really, really cute. And she's in, uh, part, she's in the community project. Use it up. So go girl. And, um, I just think she's so sweet. And like I said, we gotta give each other some love in this community. She asked me a ton of questions. So have I ever purchased from Yes Style? No, I have not. I have never purchased from there. I've never even looked at that site. So what is it? What, what's uh, the goods on that? Uh, is it makeup? I'll have to go look. I don't know. Is it clothing? See, I just stick to like two sites for clothing. I do Torrid and sometimes Lane Bryant, but mostly Torrid, but it's overpriced. It's really sad. Um, you know, when I was growing up, this is like too much information, but anyways, there really wasn't anywhere for me to shop. I've always kind of been this size. And so, you know, a lot of times I have sad pictures of me in high school wearing character shirts from Walmart, because again, there wasn't a lot of cute stuff. I, had a lot of hoodies. I wore hoodies in the summer because I was just like, mm, uh, I don't want anyone to see this really cool shirt from Walmart that my mom got me, which bless her heart, she was a tiny lady, so she didn't know what to do with poor me. But 
Um, that went on super cute. It's like literally the easiest thing ever. I just dipped a dot into that cream shadow and it covered my whole lid space. And that's typically what I do. I will try to start at the outside of the eye because that's where you're gonna, wherever you touch your brush first is where you're gonna get the most color. So I always like to start out here and then I will just kind of move it through my crease. Now I do have like slightly hooded eyes. So I try to do just above the crease too. But like I said, this is a trust the process with makeup. And I know my light's kind of like flat, like um, washing that out. Here, let me move it just a little. There. So you can kind of see. Um, This one is like a little. But yeah, I just slightly above the crease so that when I open my eyes, you can see everything. So I got to put this light back. Boop. Okay. So I always keep this brush in case I need to go back in because I am not skilled in makeup. So sometimes I need to go back in. Um, and then we're going to pick one of these really pretty mattes and then a pretty shimmer. Let's close the little door. I just think it's so cute. So, um, let's go with one of these like really pretty mauve colors. So I need to check out Yes Style. I don't even know what it is to be honest with you. Um, but I thought that was a cool question because it's probably something you all know about. I just don't know. Um, so no, I have never purchased from Yes Style. What's my favorite eyeshadow color to wear? I'm really glad I picked a palette like this because I do wear a lot of neutrals, but I love a really pretty like rosy mauve color, like matches my shirt. So let's get into this. Um, do I have a favorite sunscreen? Oh, I grabbed it. So I have two. Um, this is my favorite to wear under makeup and this is my favorite to wear on makeup days I'm not gonna go wearing any makeup. So this is the Neutrogena Hydra Boost. It has um, SPF 50. So I'll just share that. Uh, this is for my face and I do my neck and my hands. I have like an all over just like Walmart brand um, spray for like the body, but a lot of times my body's covered. So I always put this on before anything and um, you can wear makeup over this, but I do prefer this one. This is from Dr. Brandt, the Liquid Sun Shield Daily Brightening Mineral Sunscreen. Um, and this has SPS 50, but makeup sits on top of this. So when I'm going to wear makeup, I put this on. And when I just know I'm probably not, I just stick this on. But I put it on, I try to every day. Because my grandma had some, um, a skin cancer spot on her nose when she was younger. This light is really bright. Let me move that back just a tad. Hopefully I can edit that out. Um, so when she had that spot, it was really scary. I was like preteen. And, um, she was just the first person in my life. that's like, it doesn't matter what else you do, take care of your skin. So I was like, yes, ma'am. And, um, you know, I'm starting to see this, the effects of sun on my skin. So it is nice to, it's good to just take care of it ahead of time. I think for the most part, my skin has always been pretty easy breezy going. Um, I've always had the chin stuff when it's, you know, the time of the month but other than that you know I, I'm getting wrinkles but they're not horrible but I'm almost 40. So my next step when I put on a clown amount of makeup is to take a brush that has absolutely nothing on it and I just like buff the colors together and every once in a while if I feel like I've gone too high I go back in with that foundation brush just to make sure I like some space. Now some people go all the way up and that's super cool. I think that looks beautiful. I just don't think it looks good on me. So then I just make sure those colors are like sitting together really nicely and then after I do this, so um, it's not necessarily like when you wash promotions, it's just till I feel like the color is blended nicely. Um, I bring it in from the outside of the eye because that's where I put the most color down. It looks a little something like this. And then I take this brush that I've just kind of got a little product on and I go like a little under my eye. I don't do like a full, but I just like to give it a little color under there. And again, if that gets a little out of hand, I'll take the powder in just with my little foundation brush. I don't put any more product on it, but I just go under that. So it's just the, that's my way of like making sure all the makeup's like pulling together. Okay. So, um, do I have any favorite restaurants? We just love pizza. We're so basic. Um, we love pizza here. Pizza, pizza, pizza. So, um, in this area, there's a lot of commercial pizza where we came from. There was a bunch of those little mom and pop shops, like, 
you know, the grandma made the sauce. It's the same recipe or the bread and it was like special. Um, so shout out to like Angelo's, Alameda's and Maria's. If you know any of that pizza, then you're from my area because they're only available in my area, but they were really, um, my favorite restaurants. And still to this day, I can skip a lot of stuff when my friends want to go out for work and I'm like, I'll go with you, but I'll just get a pop or something. It's not because I have any kind of eating disorder. I just, I like food obviously, but like pizza is my weakness. So, um, I favorite ice cream flavor. I love like cookies and cream type of ice cream Oreo. Um, but like if I'm going to go to like Dairy Queen, I love to get like a strawberry cheesecake blizzard or whatever their flavor of the month is just to try it. Like I never want to have like FOMO, but I am one of those people that order the same thing at the restaurants I go to. It's just, it is me. Am I a Disney fan? Yes. I, always used to like take one of my friend's kids to go see the newest Disney movie, but I've never been to Disneyland. I've never been to Disney World. Um, and Sleeping Beauty is my absolute all-time favorite Disney movie. But, um, you know, having a child that's, he's not a huge fan of Disney. Like he said that he would rather not go to Disney World because he doesn't love like that stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. So I just never, I mean, I don't have that like desire, but I still think it's so fun when people are like diehard Disney fans. One of my like best friends in college she was they like went there to get engaged they went there to like celebrate their first year like they did that all of their grown-up life and I was like cute but that's never been me and then what does my ideal outfit look like I love a good saying on a shirt I love a hoodie and jeans moment and other than that I'm kind of dressed like this it's like leggings and like a tunic type of shirt I'm a very basic dresser I just wanted to fit over all the things that's pretty much it. So thank you for all those questions, Anna. Those are really fun to answer. Okay. Arts First Lady asked, how did I meet my husband? Um, and he's just my man friend because I'm too old to have a boyfriend. But, um, and do I remember what fragrance he's wearing? I do. And I grabbed them. So this is like my absolute favorite perfume ever. I almost threw it at myself. And it's called the Escada Sorbet Rosso. It's just this beautiful watermelon fruity perfume. I went through a whole bottle of this when we first started dating. So I know this is what I was wearing because this was just that perfume that like made me feel like super pretty. And he's always been a fan of this one. So I'm pretty sure this is what he was wearing. And I always told him he smelled so good. This is the um, Cool Water. And it's just, I don't know, it just smells so good. I can't really describe scents like that. But it just smells like him to me. So I know these were the scents we were wearing because I went through a whole bottle of this. And I bought this for him like our first Christmas together. So because I know it's what, that's what he was wearing at the time. Okay. I mute through all of these items. Let me put this on the ground. Hopefully I can edit this down into something that you guys will want to watch. I promise I'll put up some kind of haul today. All right. I have a few more questions and I need to finish this eye look. And then we'll be done here. Okay. Uh, Busa Mascara asks, do I have any hobbies or things I do outside of work? Um, Bath and Body Works, makeup, and I, I don't really, I've never, I've tried things. I've tried things. I've gotten into, so honest, I don't, this isn't bad, but this is my palette. So it's not bad. I usually put on a shimmer with my finger. It is the best way for me to apply it. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, this feels so pretty. Um, I'm still going to haul this like we never touched it, but, um, when I get the rest of my stuff, this is what I do. I put it on like this way. So, um, I have, uh, got into things very, very, uh, short term. I've never like sold anything or, um, I love reading. I started a book club with some of my friends. We couldn't keep it going because everyone had kids and, you know, but we call it between the sheets <laughs> where we get together once a month and we would, um, you know, meet at one of our favorite restaurants and someone would like lead the book uh, discussion. It was very fun. I loved that. I would love to do that again. And then um, other than that, reading, I love to read, love reading. Um, I don't read it as, read as much as I used to. Um, I love like organ organizing and planning things. So I, you know, not as a hobby, but I, I do love to do that. And so that will be what I spend a lot of my time doing. I don't think anyone calls that like, I expect any more blush. I don't know why, but we're going to, that's, this is how you get to clown status. You guys you keep adding a little bit of color. But that's the finished look. I mean, I think it really turned out pretty. So I'm probably going to keep this rambling video. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how you get, uh, 
the beautiful looks that I create for you all. You just put down one base color, something a little bit darker, work it into your crease, and then a shimmer on top, and that is the magic. Um, so, I guess I would say, no, I don't have any hobbies. I need one. I've always been on the search for one. Like, I tried to learn how to play a musical instrument in my um, early 30s. No, I can't do it. Um, I love music, love music. I could go on and on about music, pop culture. So any of that stuff I'm game for, but no, I like really, I just love talking. And so <laughs> that's how YouTube became my hobby is because I just love talking, obviously. Lauren asks, how did I find myself, how did I find moving out of state and how different is it? It isn't different, but that's because I've always kind of been very flexible. I, I'm very, I'm a person that's like, I don't have to be the one that decides where we eat. I don't have to be the one that decides where. So I've just always been that way. Maybe being the oldest of three, um, I had a brother that was the person that liked to pick all those things. Um, so, you know, not, nothing wrong with that. That's, that's his personality. So I guess because I'm a very flexible person, moving wasn't that hard. Of course, I do miss my family. I really do. Um, but... Moving out of state, you kind of start to do the same things. Well, this is my experience, not everyone's. You do the same things you did before. So, like, I, like, tried to find the Walmart because I knew I needed, like, Walmart. It's, like, oxygen air. You know, it's got all the things. Um, try to find some p good pizza. That was a fail because everything here is commercial, and I'm just not a big fan of, like, Pizza Hut, Domino's, all that. I, that's all there was. And I was like, okay, so first thing I missed, besides my family, because I'm not a total monster, was pizza. Um, tried to explore with my son just to make him feel comfortable about where we live now. Um, so you just start to do those things. I did like Google. I had to keep my GPS out for a few months when I moved here just because I think it was like an attachment thing. Um, I just, I was like, okay, I've gone to Walmart like all the time. I still need to put Walmart into the GPS so that I know where I'm driving. So for eyeliner, I don't normally do the whole bottom line. I just do up until my eye. It just kind of like... I don't either fixes the makeup mistakes I made or um, it looks good to me. I don't really put any on the top. I literally just do it on the outside of the eye. Um, sometimes when I'm feeling fancy, I'll brighten the inside. But this is my absolute favorite eyeliner. It's Whiskey from Urban Decay. Just a brown. It's kind of natural. I can't believe I'm going to show you guys my mascara face. So hold for that. But let's talk about the next one. Snoodle. I think it's Snoodle D. Snoodle D. I love some of these names. You guys are so creative. I was like, Tisha Keen is my name of my channel. <laughs> because I don't, I just don't have any like funny nicknames. So, uh, Snoodle D asked, do I watch TV shows? If so, which ones or what other hobbies or interests that I have? Well, we established that I don't have any hobbies or interests. Um, again, I've found something that I can do with my talking, which is amazing. Um, I appreciate anyone that watches my rambly chatty videos. You guys are the real MVP because I was really worried about that. When I first started, I was like, girl, you ramble on and on and on. How are people going to be able to follow? But you guys seem to, and I love that. Um, TV, I really don't. Like, I've gotten into some TV shows, but um, I really watch YouTube. I watch a lot of makeup YouTube. I watch some teacher YouTube, and I love, of course, the candle community, the fragrance community. So a lot of times my family gets mad at me um, and it's not an addiction. It's just that like I love to support. So I have a lot of people I follow. So um, I'm trying to watch all their videos and comment and they're just like, you're always on YouTube. And I'm like, you're always on your game. So it is what it is. But um, I will put my phone down for family time. So like we, we just watched the Harry Potter movies together as a family for the first time. I know, a little late to the game, but that was fun. Aiden really liked those. Um, we had started them when he was littler, but um, it was just, uh, I don't know. He didn't get into them, so we didn't continue. Um, but he liked them now. So we just finished that. And then we'll watch something back from the 90s or 80s every once in a while. We have movies. We still have DVDs that we'll just throw in from time to time. And then um, she also asks, what is the significance or difference between White Barn and Bath and Body Works lines? I don't really think that there is. I think maybe at the beginning there was supposed to be. Um, and again, there are a lot of knowledgeable people here that just 
they know more than I do. But um, I think for the most part, there was going to be a huge difference between the two. Um, so there was going to be White Barn, which was going to be a little more elevated packaging, um, you know, the aesthetic really. And then um, Bath and Body Works, I think at that time was with like Slacken and Co. So those candles were um, maybe a little bit more creative um, in terms of scents, but um, for the most part, they had the cuter packaging, cutesier packaging. And, uh, you know, I think it started with one and they expanded to White Barn, but I don't know any more than that. I would like to look into it more. Maybe I'll share that with you guys in a different video. So, um, I don't really remember. I just remember all of a sudden there started to become Bath and Body Works with a White Barn sitting right next to it. And we were like, okay. So, that's the end of my questions and this is the end of the video. So I think it turned out good. I really hope that this was worth watching you guys. If you want me to do it again in the future, I definitely would. Again, I'm not a makeup person that you should listen to, but I do, you know, your everyday average girl makeup and you guys always give me sweet compliments. So thank you so much. Thank you to everyone that asked me a question. I hope I answered it well. I didn't pre-plan any of these except for like if you asked me what, what sunscreen I use I was like oh I'll go grab it off my counter so um again thank you thank you for asking these questions thank you for watching this video I'll try to throw in like a haul today in case this as a video you clicked on and it just wasn't your jam but um I love chatting with you guys really truly it's my favorite part so again I'll do videos like this in the future if it's worth watching because I you know like I said if you guys want to know more about me or know more about my routines with my Bath and Body Works products and stuff. I could probably sit and think about it better and answer them for you. But other than that, I'm going to let you go. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in a video very soon. Take care. Bye.